to Amy. She's in Greenville, and Amy, you've also seen some heavy rain in Greenville, and the rain continues to fall. Despite the fact that there's no severe weather right now in Greenville, we're still seeing some heavy downpours in the city itself. Yeah, right now it's actually kind of calmed down in terms of the rainfall, Malachi. But I can tell you, as I was driving in uh, earlier this afternoon, some of the lights are out downtown. You've got the scattered power outages. And so you have to play it safe if you're obviously up at a red light that's not working. Uh, you have to treat it like a, a stop sign, a four way stop. And a lot of folks are doing that. We're also seeing reports coming in right now that the uh, Red Cross is opening up a shelter due to all the damage we've been showing you in Spartanburg County and in Spartanburg City. Uh, our most up-to-date information says that they have a 2 o'clock shelter opening at Covenant Baptist Church. That's 200 Evangel Road in Spartanburg. So that's a big deal for those who've suffered damage. We saw those, those apartments with the, the ceilings wide open that Dan Bickford showed us. And so people like that who are in that kind of scenario right now, they have a place to go if they need it. We want to head out, of course, in Greenville as well to see what Ayla Farone has found. I know, Ayla, you're keeping an eye out. And the story keeps being in Greenville, I guess, so much rain, so much flooding. Yeah, Amy, it's kind of, as you mentioned, calmed down a little bit here in Greenville, but throughout the day, we've kind of seen ebbs and flows with exactly how far or how hard, rather, that rainfall is coming down. We've been here at this location on Hilly Street, just off East Stone Avenue. We're right next to the Richland Creek Animal Clinic, and this is Richland Creek itself. You can see, if you were watching our live shots earlier, the river has actually, believe it or not, gone down a little bit and has started slowing down a little bit from what we saw earlier. So so it does seem like things are letting up here. Even so, it looks like however fast and however much water was here earlier actually took out part of the bank on the other side of the river here. You can see that damage to the fence there. And also just a lot of debris has been coming down this river as that rain continues to fall and the river continues to flow faster and faster. Even a big log coming up right here that we have. And as I mentioned, that kind of stuff has just been building and building since we have been out here. So they do you have this small road. It's called Hilly Street closed off of East Stone Avenue, and there are many road closures just like this all across Greenville County and really the upstate. So we do want to remind our viewers that if you do come to a road closure, don't go around those barriers because there's a reason that the city or the county has closed them, and that's for your safety. So of course, we'll continue to go and look for situations just like this to bring our viewers more information on what's happening after this severe weather. Ayla, thank you so much for giving us a, a first-hand look there in Greenville. Also, the damage that we've been talking about in Spartanburg, I mentioned Dan Bickford inside an apartment with the roof open, wide open at the Crown Point Apartments. Well, he's going to take us through the place. He takes us on a walkthrough, and you'll understand why they're opening a shelter in Spartanburg. Hey, we're back. We were showing you what was going on. Again, we're off Powell Mill Road at Crown Point Apartments. This is the inside of one of those apartments that was hit by the storm. Take a look. This is what it looks like from the inside when you're missing part of your roof. Hole in the wall, water dripping through. You can see this, this is a living room of a gentleman's apartment. And we happen to have that gentleman here right now. His name is Calvin Alexander. And uh, he's, hey, he's still talking to somebody on the phone. He's wrapping up a phone call right now. People probably calling to check on him. Uh, Mr. Alexander, what was happening when the storm hit? What were you doing? What happened? I was sitting in the back room watching TV, and I heard the lights blinking. I saw the, I saw the lights blinking. So I said, oh, let me get up from here. So as soon as I got up, the wind came and blew my window out and blew the door off the hinges. Let's take a walk here and show us. Oh, excuse me. So this is the door right here that was blown off the hinges. That was blown off the hinges, yeah. I was sitting right here on the couch. I was sitting right here on the couch, and I heard this wind. And I said, let me get up from here. It's like as soon as I got up, the, the window busted, and the door was in the hallway. No. Mm. And, and you're okay. So this all blew through? and Yeah, it all blew through. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. We will also want to show you, let's go to the bedroom right now. And this shows, uh, I mean, this is an incredible view here, too, and just shows how... Sometimes you can just be in the right place because this is the master bedroom. That's the bed. And look where the headboard is. Cinder blocks fell from above. They sure did. They sure did. You know, and that piece just fell off too. 
That piece that was hanging right yeah, there? Yeah, when we came through here earlier, that piece was hanging off. Yeah, it was hanging. Yeah, yeah. it was hanging. We can't get into the bathroom. We can't get into the master bathroom because we got cinder blocks all, all in the hallway. So, you know, mm. and, I, and, and I thank God that I'm still alive. Yeah, that's a, that, that's a remarkable story. Now, now, your wife was here, too? No, she was at work. Okay, she was at work at the time. Yeah, she was at work. Yeah, she was at work. Yeah. Well, this is just one example of the damage that was done around here. Jason's going back in here to take a look at uh, the r hole that has opened up in the roof. There are more than one unit like this, by the way, in this particular co apartment complex with trees that are down. And you can imagine with that water pouring in, well, when we're, this is obviously an upstairs unit. Folks downstairs are getting all the water that came in through here. Do you know the people downstairs? Well, there's nobody down here. Okay, there's nobody down there right now? Best as you can tell, and best as you can tell in the uh, complex, uh, everybody seemed to be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just left them down in the office. I just left them down in the office, and most of all the people was in the office because they had us evacuate here because we had smells. We had smell of gas, mm -hmm. so they had everybody evacuate. So. Mm. So obviously they let everybody back in. We no, saw the they ain't let nobody yeah. back in yet. Well, I mean, at least into mm. here to take a look around. Yeah. Well, I came back on my own. <laughs> I came back on my own because I wanted to see that anything else happened to the apartment, you know. You know. Then we got a neighbor across here. He just left not too long ago. His whole back room is down. It's down. So. Mm. Well, remarkable. Glad you're okay. And glad, yeah. Glad everything's. Uh, at least you. At least you got your health. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Here's a here's a look for at the one end of this apartment complex over here. And if Jason, if you could just shoot out, you can see the damage and the trees, and you can see damage even continuing down that adjacent street. I mean, looking up, you can see the debris, the insulation on the siding. I, this is I, when we first uh, I came out to this neighborhood once again, and we were just uh, a few blocks over. This was described as having it make it, having it look like a bomb went off, and. You know, the more we walk around and being able to go in the building, the more that is truly an apt description. Uh, we've got a bobcat out here right now. Uh, they came out here when we arrived, actually, and they're starting to clean things up. I think their first job is to clean Powell Mill Road off, because right now it's closed. There's no way you can get through here. Uh, utilities are out there. The Piedmont Natural Gas Truck is out there. They're checking everything to make sure everything is okay at their end. Uh, We've got the power poles tipped over. Obviously, power is out. Uh, Duke Energy is going to be checking on that. And again, just because of the extent of some of this damage that we're seeing in this area, it's going to be a while before we do start to see some of the power come back on in a few locations. So, so uh, we will send it back to you for right now, and uh, we will continue to kind of monitor the damage and let you know about uh, what has been happening here on the west sides of Spartanburg. Julie, back to you. All right, that was our Julie. She was here downtown, and I'm taking her place now as we continue our team coverage today. I'm watching this weather situation, and we're going to go right back to the Crown Point Apartments because we have someone live there right now. Scotty K has arrived on scene there, showing us the damage. And Scotty K, it really is remarkable. I guess things are slowly being cleaned up behind you. There is some progress being made. Yes, Amy, lots of progress being made out here. You took over Julie's spot. We took over Dan and Jason's spot. We are out here at Crown Point Apartments, and uh, you got an inside look there at one of the units here, just the amount of damage done. We actually just caught up with some folks who live here. This is Dietrich. Dietrich, tell us what you saw, what you heard uh, when this all came through. Just tell me uh, what was going on in your mind. I was laying down on the couch, and then I just uh, hear this roar, and it sounded like a million lions roaring at one time. And so when I got up, I looked out my window, and I actually seen trees being plowed down and debris going past my window. What was going through your mind at this moment? I called my, my daughter. She was in the uh, room, and she, so I called her name. I screamed her name, and I told her, go to the bathroom. And so she can go in the bathroom and get down in that bathtub. And it was just, it was the whole building just shook. But it luckily, was, you guys are okay. Yes. Have you yes, we have are. you talked with your neighbors, checked on them to make sure they're okay? Yes, I have. I actually had to help this elderly woman over to the office because she was in a walker and she couldn't walk that well. So I had to actually, and it was flooding. 
So I helped her over to the office because that's what I do. You know, I love to help people. I do. All right. I well, do. thank you for doing that. We've got a lot of people out here helping right now. You can probably hear the chainsaws. And as Dan uh, mentioned earlier, there are lots of crews out here uh, checking. There are power lines all over the road. They're telling us not to get near these power lines. Even if they're not on the road, do not touch any lines that you see because they could be energized. Uh, but, of course, we've got these crews out here working to cut up all these trees. You see them. Uh, there. You can see where the roof back here is um, torn up. Where this tree, of course, some limbs fell here. We've got cars over here that are crushed from trees falling. Uh, just lots and lots and lots of damage. We've got dozens of people probably impacted by this storm. Uh, their homes, of course, impacted. Their cars, no way to get to work. Check out this right here. We've got a car right here. This tree is laying on top of. Uh, bad news for this person today. Uh, but we are so thankful to know. Uh, well, according to Obviously, neighbors out here, folks who live out here and are checking on each other. No serious injuries to report. I have heard that a few people were taken to the hospital out of precaution, but nothing major. So we are very grateful for that. We're going to stay out here because, of course, this is one of the, the hardest hit areas over here on the west side of Spartanburg. We've seen lots of damage from Westgate Mall, uh, WO Ezel, and Blackstock, but Powell Mill Road seems to be the place. This road is completely blocked off. So, again, if you are planning to come out here, if this is part of your commute, find an alternate route. Both sides of the road have been blocked as crews work continuously to get this damage out of here. Uh, for now, I'll toss it back to you, Amy. All right, so Scotty K, you know, the, those folks have an option tonight. If their roof is gone, there is a shelter now open at Covenant Baptist Church in Spartanburg. Do they know that? Are people there aware that they have somewhere to go if they need a place to stay tonight? So we've, our job here is to inform them, and we are working on letting those folks know. Anyone we okay. see that has been impacted, of course, we will uh, give that news to them so that they know they don't have to worry about a place to stay. Of course, it is still raining out here, and a lot of folks are getting soaked. They don't have a ride. They don't have a way to get out. So we'll let them know that um, that is another form of shelter as their homes are being repaired. Amy. All right. Scotty Kay, what, what a situation. Thank you for showing us. What is happening out there in Spartanburg? Very bad damage. Gordon, of course, we've been keeping an eye on this. Our, our team all morning long, I mean, for hours and hours, watching this weather story unfold. And it's really heartbreaking when you see it impacting families. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. You know, while you were talking to Scotty Kay, in the background behind her, and I don't know if you could see it there, there's somebody walking with, it with a trash bag in their hand. Yeah. And you have to wonder, after you've seen the damage Dan Bickford showed us inside, people's completely destroyed uh, homes inside their apartments. Yeah. That trash bag may just be what they could salvage to get out of there today. I mean, people are not okay. only losing almost everything they have here, but as you put it, Amy, people have got to go find a place to sleep tonight. I mean, yeah. it, it is a real disaster for who knows how many people in that apartment complex today. Absolutely, and it's a story that we will keep on top of, of course, with Scotty Kay on the scene and all of the rest of our reporters spread out around the region. There have been so many stories, even, you know, m reports of mudslides in North Carolina, uh, the flooding that's been going on in Greenville. I mean, it's just it, all over the area, and now with the tornado danger in Greenwood, we really need to keep a, keep a close eye. Yeah, on let's it. do that right now. Let's go to Malachi Rogers. Is that tornado warning still out there, Malachi? Yeah, we have Good news, that has been allowed to expire, the tornado warning in Greenwood, but that doesn't mean we're completely done with strong or severe storms, especially in our southern viewing areas down towards Greenwood. You can almost just paint a line between Greenwood up towards Newberry into southern Union County, Lawrence, all the way over into